Okay, Addis Maxis here. This time I'm talking about this old Shimpo digital stroboscope. It stroboscopically does non-contact measurement of RPM in any object that has a repetitive motion. I am do need to display this warning because, of course, this is a strobe light, so anybody who might be sensitive to strobographically generated seizures just wanted to make sure that I... Uh, had that included. This actually came with, I mean, this warning came with this 4K copy of Poltergeist, and I didn't, thought it was interesting that they included a warning with that movie now. Super detail in 4K. Enough about that. How about a little more about this old Shimpo? Shimpo is a Japanese brand. This one uh, is probably made in the 90s, but they're still around. This was made in Kyoto, Japan. Digital stroboscope. So, there's various ways of measuring how fast something's spinning, RPM'd, or with zip saws that are moving in and out, or even orbital sanders that are orbiting around. You use, use a contact type. This is an old mechanical style contact type where you either have various shapes that you put into the center of what you're trying to measure the RPM, or you have wheels which you put on the outside and then this will give you a measurement of feet per second of linear speed. So that's one advantage of the mechanicals. They can measure linear speed on a surface where this just registers cycles. Whether something's rotating around once again or a jigsaw spindle going in and out. These are used in industrial environments where you can't effectively use a contact type and the more simple photo type where you have like a piece of reflective tape and then you just point the counter at it and it counts how many times it sees the reflection per minute. This is instead using a strobe light. And this one isn't super bright. Strobe, old strobe lights, it's, you've got to replace the bulb and you have to replace the strobe capacitor. That's really what affects the brightness. but. This is a really high quality unit. They're still around. This measures from effectively 100. It'll go a little bit less, um, but effectively this is rated for 100 to 12,500. And the reason it doesn't go higher is because when you start going real fast, the, the especially 12,000, the light in the strobe doesn't dim enough before it's triggered again. So there's an effective limit to using strobe light based ones, although they're real bright. Shimpo, I mean, even these old units are anywhere from $150 to $300. They sell new for $800 to $1,000. And they, they're more modern. They're uh, LED based, so LEDs can switch super fast. Some of them will read up to 40,000 cycles a minute. And they're just using a bright light to illuminate something uh, for a a tiny fraction of a second and the way your eyes work it is it essentially is illuminating for a small fraction of a second and then when the frequency is aligned with whatever you're measuring it makes it look like it's standing still because every time the f strobe flashes it's going to be synchronized with a particular spot on whatever you're measuring giving it the appearance that it's not moving well, I was going to attempt to try to demonstrate it, but the way the strobe light works with the um, frame rate of the camera or the shutter speed of the camera, uh, there's going to be lack of synchronization between the strobe light and the camera. So right now I can tell that this fan is moving around, if we look, 920 RPM. You can't, you can't see on the camera, but when I look at it with my eyes, it looks like the logo is essentially still. It says Arctic on it, and you can adjust it. So that's what it's doing is it's illuminating once per revolution of this fan. And since it's only lighting up synchronously with the RPM, you're only really seeing, your eyes don't adjust quickly enough. So all you're seeing is an image, a flash at the same spot in rotation. So it looks like it's standing still. Sometimes it creeps up or creeps down a little bit. That's a little bit of the creep of this. But you can get it to where it's absolutely static. And you can have something that's rotating. And you can see if there's cracks on pulleys. You can see if there are belts that are fraying or damaged. Because it's like having a 
taking a sn snapshot, a photo, a flash photograph, and then studying it. But it's all in real time. You can be at a safe distance. You're not touching anything. You're not interfering with anything. Uh, things that are behind cages and all that kind of stuff. Uh, all sorts of industrial equipment. Uh, you can just use this and say, okay, everything seems to be fine. Maybe, or you can say, hey, you know, that motor... Uh, is running a bit slow, so there's something impeding that conveyor belt, etc. So these are used heavily in all sorts of industrial environments. And it's just unfortunate it's so hard to demonstrate it really on video. Besides this, it has a really nice, easy to read, large display. Once again, goes to 12,500 and to a single decimal point. This is a 10 turn. This knob is a 10 turn uh, industrial. It's a real tall uh, potentiometer, just variable resistor. But you have to spin it around 10 times from the maximum down to the maximum up. That's how you get a decent precision control out of it. It has other things for science, for or electronics and electrical testing, such as it can trigger other objects or other electronic things. So it has external trigger in and out. And a lot of these equipment, they have a little handle, although they didn't include, they included VDs on the bottom, but not on the side where you're going to be setting it down. Of course, all steel construction. Because it's a strobe light that can go so fast, it has, it's actually pretty heavy because it has a pretty big transformer and really large circuits in order to drive this xenon strobe light, uh, you know, at 12,500 times a minute. Has this little area in the back where, you know, easy access fuse, metal switch. So this is a pretty decent one, and they are owned now by something called the NIDEC Group, which is a big, um, they're really known for high-grade computer server fans and just high-grade computer fans in general. They're one of the big manufacturers. Sorry, I'm not sure. And they bought out this company, so they're getting into test equipment. But this thing has this little area in the back where you can, st <laughs> just enough space to where you can cram the wire in there. Just thought it was an overall neat unit. Picked it up for a great deal. It actually appears that this front rim is stainless steel, to tell you the truth. It is a genuine aluminum reflector. Um, and I'll, besides those kind of facts, I'm going to wait to open it up until I can order up a new strobe capacitor and bulb so it runs brighter. But it's kind of a testament that this thing still runs just like it should, you know, decades later. And is this, you know, once you have one of these, it's surprisingly handy and useful. I mean, it's much easier to measure the RPM of something just by being able to point a flashing light at it and turn a dial and see what RPM something's running with. You don't have to attach stickers. You don't have to get real close like those, a lot of standard optical ones. There's, of course, laser-based ones and stuff like that. But the strobe ones are just real nice because they illuminate the object. Uh, that you're trying to look at brightly, which is kind of neat. So it allows you to do inspection of running machinery. And it just has a readout that's just calibrated to number of blinks per minute. And that's how you get the RPM. And one quick note, with strobe lights and various other things, some you'll get to those lighting synchronizations well they'll first they'll start to spin faster or spin backwards and then they might spin forwards all that is is that if the strobe light effect is slightly ahead then that means every time the fan comes around it's actually taking an image uh slightly before it hits 360 degrees so it actually slowly appears to rotate backwards because of that timing difference and if it's too slow and it starts to appear to be slowly moving in the other direction, it's just because the strobe light, uh, the fan's advancing slightly more than one full cycle. In this case, 360 degrees per minute, I should say. So that kind of explains when you're real close to the synchronization, why something will appear to like rotate one way and then rotate a different direction as it gets near synchronization, synchronized, and then gets ahead of synchronization. But I uh, guess never really considered one of these things until I found it used and just thought, wow, I mean, it's actually a pretty amazing tool because just anything is now m very easy to see 
how fast it's running at. I got a recipes saw that seems like it's a little bit tired. You can use a stroboscope and measure the amount of strokes per minute and say, oh yeah, there is a problem. So uh, really pretty cool. And it's neat that they're still around. It's too bad they're so expensive. But at least this brand, this one's built really well. So anyway, really appreciate everybody who's been watching. See you next time.